Hello, welcome to another game development tutorial. Today we're going to be using... What is it? Godot? Or Godot? 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 Okay, from now on, I'm gonna call it Godot only because a lot of people get mad at me when I call it Godot. Alright, so I'm going to be starting a new series. It'll be probably three to four parts on how to make a top-down game, or at least the setup for a top-down game. So you can turn this top-down game into a top-down shooter, you can turn it into a top-down RPG, uh, kind of like Undertale. It, it's going to be something like the Undertale engine. It's going to look like it. In our project manager, uh, create new projects, decide your path, and I'm just going to call my project top-down game tutorial. And now double-click Alright, so this is our editor. Oops. Uh, this is going to be 2D, not 3D. So go to the 2D viewport. This is our scene. Okay, so first of all, we're going to add a base node. This is going to be our world, so add a node 2D and name it World. So this is our world. I'm going to save it in our scenes folder and name it world.xml. This is our world. And now let's create another scene for our player. Alright, so the base node of the player scene is going to be a kinematic body 2D node. This is just going to be an empty shell, essentially, for us to control our player. Let's save this. Alright, we have our player, and we have our world. Now let's go into project our project settings, application, main scene, and click the folder here, file, and then scenes, world.xml. So this is going to be our base scene when we press the main play button over here. If we want to play the player scene on its own, which is not a good idea because we're going to put the scene inside of the world, uh, then you would hit this button right here, or press F6. Alright, so in this first part we're going to be focusing on the movement and setup of basically everything. So. First of all, let's add a collision to the uh, player. Just a collision shape 2D. And let's make this shape a, a rectangle. And let's make it 16 by 16. And just so everything is snapping into place, let's go to Edit, Configure, Snap and grid size 16 by 16 and now edit use snap so there is our collision attached to our player and I'm just gonna rename this collision so now we have a collision attached to our player let's add a raycaster a raycast 2d So now we have a Raycast 2D. This Raycast 2D, is, what it's going to do is it's going to measure our direction so that when we go on to part 3, which is the animations, we'll have a sense of direction on which animation will play at which times. Alright, so next let's add a camera, camera 2D, so that the camera will actually follow our player. And to make make sure that it does this, we're going to go over here into the inspector of our camera node and select current so now that is going to be our camera always focusing on our player let's actually move this up here and now we're going to add a temporary sprite um, this isn't going to be permanent especially at the end of these series of tutorials it's not going to be permanent is this going to be a placeholder for uh, what is to come? It's just going to be a sprite so that we can actually see our player moving. So let's rename this to shadow because this will be our shadow at the end of this series. So under texture in our inspector go to load sprites and shadow shadow.png uh, you can select whatever you want since this is just a placeholder it, it can be what you want I'm just going to make it a black block for now so 
it's visible on our screen and let's save this all right now let's go into our world and let's click this uh, button up here that's that looks like a chain so click that and then go into scenes and then player.xml so now what that does is it inserts our player scene into our world and we can drag this wherever we want and we can't edit the different components of of this uh, player because it counts as an object you can put scenes inside of other scenes and it counts as an object alright let's also turn snap on uh, the world 16 pixels by 16 pixels so now we have our player in our world so if we press F5 or the play button up here it'll automatically save our scene and it'll play the game so as you can see we cannot move we can't do anything that is because we need to go into coding and GD script now um, you will need some experience with the Goda interface with this tutorial but I'm not sure if you'll you'll need uh, GD script uh, knowledge pre GD script knowledge or not this will end up looking complicated but I'll try and explain it as best as I can alright so what you're gonna wanna do is go into your player scene right click add script and this is going to be GD script inherits kinematic body 2D and then the path is going to be to be in a scripts folder so we're gonna have to create a new folder and call it scripts so we're in our scripts folder and we're just gonna call player.gd and click create uh... just delete all these comments here uh... they're not gonna be helpful so the first thing we're gonna wanna do in gd script is we're going to want to extend the the ready function and if you don't know what this ready function is uh... it's a function that is called when the node is created J just another uh, thing you'll probably want to know what functions and a couple uh, things in programming actually mean to understand a bunch of this so funk ready is called upon whenever the C the node that it's extended to is created so essentially at the start of the scene so at the start of the scene we're going to set the fixed process to true so what this does is it calls upon another function called fixed process to call upon fixed process you would say func underscore fixed process delta just press enter and then create some spaces down here so what the fixed process function is is every frame anything in here will execute so every frame anything under the fixed process function will execute so keep that in mind that is very useful for just anything in Godot I'm sorry, Godot. Gosh, I cannot. Such a change. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to create an, a variable up here in between the extends and the and the ready function, uh, and we're going to put export before the variable de declaration. And what this export does is it makes it so that whatever node this extends in the inspector it will actually show the variable so you can change it not extends uh, so export var, var for, short for variable motion speed and for now we're just gonna set this to 140 alright so that's our motion speed now we're going to create another variable called ray node. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it ray node because this is because in Godot you can create a variable and that variable can represent a node within your scene. 
So you can call upon functions from that node in your scene by creating a variable that represents it. And if that was a lot to comprehend, it will make sense eventually. So in our function, in our ready function tab uh, function, we're going to uh, put ray node equals get underscore node and then ray cat, uh, parenthesis raycast 2d close parenthesis what I've done in the ready node is I have set the variable ray node to the node raycast 2d so we can call upon functions on this node so we don't have to create an individual script for each individual object if we want to uh, use a function from them so let's save this alright so in our fixed process uh, delta in our fixed process function we're going to add another variable called motion and motion is going to equal a vector a vector 2 so what a vector is is it is essentially two values x and y don't don't actually put that but it is the x position and the y position is how you determine a position in an object in a scene and this is just a vect a vector 2 is just essential in all game programming unity uses it uh, unreal uses it you know all game engines use vectors in programming so you need it's vital to understand what vectors are for instance in unity a vector 3 is three values x y and z and this is the same in unreal engine so we're going to be using a vector 2 because we only have two axes that we want to change our player on let's add a comment here saying saying that everything below this is going to be part of the motion all right time to work on the movement so we're going to create an if statement if input dot is underscore action pressed UI up and then a colon we're going to set motion plus equals to vector vector 2 0 comma space negative 1 and this is going to set the it's going to add 0 to the x value of the vector 2 and add negative 1 to the value of vector 2 which will actually move the player up in posi position wise and we're also going to put ray node dot set underscore rot d what that stands for is rotational degree so remember we're calling upon a node inside of the scene to call upon a function this function is a is basically just function is essentially letting you set the degree of what angle the the node is actually facing so you get to determine that so you're gonna set it to 180 degrees so just put one on 180 and so go to the next next line and put another if input dot is action pressed UI UI underscore down so that will see if based on your project settings that you're pressing the UI down uh, uh, button and you can change these uh, key mappings all you want all you have to go is go into the scene tab up here go to project settings go to input map 
and you can change, you know, UI UI up to like W by, or you can like add it, add W so that also counts. So you can make W also go up, also just the up key, and you can do that with UI up, down, left, right, all of that. So you can change the controls there. If input dot is action pressed UI down motion motion plus equal vector two zero comma space one and so this will move the character down as soon as we set the character's position to the motion then that we're going to put ray node dot set underscore rotation rotational degree to zero and so that'll set the ray cast 2d 2d's direction down to zero degrees and so it'll be facing down while the other one will set it to 180 degrees and make it face up all right another if statement UI left and let's go here motion plus equals vector two negative one zero so that's going to make the character move left and now go to Reno the Reno variable dot set rotational direction or ro rotational degree now set that to negative 90 now we're just going to copy this alright so let's change the values on here <coughs> so you know change it to UI right and then change the vector 2 to positive 1 and change the rotational degree to net 90 all right so now that we have all of our values set to based on what key you're pressing now we need to actually set our position based on the mo uh, value of motion so at the end here we're going to put motion equals motion dot normalized uh, open and closing parenthesis multiplied by motion speed multiplied by delta and now type in move motion and now you have your movement let's test it out look at that moves around great so that'll do it for part one of the top-down game tutorial so if you liked it leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike I guess uh, thanks for watching bye